so we're going to talk quickly about the Bayes theorem and then we're going to go with an example so the Bayes theorem right the idea is to make a prediction based on evidence that we have okay some data so the most the idea would be to find what is the most likely prediction or the most probable hypothesis given that we have some data d <clears throat> so the theorem says that the probability of a hypothesis and this part uh, reads as given so the probability of the hypothesis given the data is equal to and then the probability of the data given the hypothesis times the probability of the hypothesis divided by the probability of the data um, now this is the Bayes theorem now all these little probabilities have a name so for example okay this is called the posterior probability okay now this probability of d given h times the probability of h this sometimes is called a likelihood okay this here the probability of the data that we have <clears throat> of observing the data that we have is the probability of the evidence okay now we can see that for many um let's say you have several hypotheses so you think that based on today's day right you are going to have a day that's going to be sunny rainy or cloudy okay so you want to compare what's the probability that my day is cloudy given the data that i have versus what's the probability that my day is rainy given the data that i have versus what's the probability that the day is sunny given the data that i have right and once you compare all those hypotheses the probability that is the highest that indicates which hypothesis it's going to win okay now when you compare for example the probability that the day is cloudy given the data this is the probability using this the the using this Bayesian rule right you, this is basically the probability that uh, you have d given cloudy times probability of cloudy divided by probability of d the next one will be probability of d given r times probability of r <clears throat> divided by the probability of d and then if i apply the formula to the last one this will be the probability of d given s times the probability of s divided by the probability of d you see that remember in order to find out what hypothesis is the most likely i have to compute all possible hypotheses and i keep the one that the pro with the highest probability when computing the different hypotheses though i see that p of d is always in the denominator right the numerator changes but the denominator is always probability of d so one thing that i can do here it's it's uh, very simple right is to have the, the is to know that the probability of d i'm going to call this part one over the probability of d i'm going to call it eta okay thus the uh, bayesian rule becomes then eta times the numerator okay another thing that it's important to notice in this probabilities is that let's say i have again the probability of cloudy which is going to be uh, the probability of rainy given the data and then the probability of sunny given the data by loss of probability the probability of cloudy plus the probability of rainy plus the probability of sunny given the data has to be equal to one right this is interesting because what this means is that all these probabilities have some numerator divided by probability of d right so this will all be i'm going to, i'm just going to replace the the items here probability of cd is going to be probability of d given c times probability of c divided by probability of d plus 
Now for Rainy, using the formula, direct substitution in the formula above, it's the probability of D given R times probability of Rainy divided by probability of D. Plus, and then here I'm going to substitute again with the formula above, probability of data given Sunny times probability of Sunny divided by the probability of D. And I know that that should equal to 1. Now, what I can do here is if I ever wanted to know what is the probability of D, assuming it's not 0, what is the probability of D? Well, what I can do is I multiply by the probability of D on both, on both sides of the equation, and I will get, and I will get, probability of Ds will be canceled over here, right? And I will, and I will have this. I will have that the probability of D. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have. I'm sorry. I'm going to have the sum of the numerators is equal to the probability of D, right? So if I multiply by probability of D, I will end up with not a one here, but a probability of D. And on the other side, all my denominators, all my denominators, are going to go. They're, they're going to simplify to one. So then I'll end up with the probability of D being the sum of all the likelihoods. That's going to be very important for later. So let's do a pro, uh, one problem and finish. I've given you several properties that I will be using throughout uh, the, pro the example. So a desk lamp produced by the Luminar company was found to be defective. That is the evidence. That is what we know. Now, there are three providers of lamps, right? Uh, three providers manufacture the lamps that the luminar company so sells. Providers A, B, and C. Now, a quality control manager is responsible for investigating the source of found defects. Okay, so this is what the quality control manager knows about the company's desk lamp production and the possible source of defects. Okay, this is basically based on you know I don't know years or months of looking at defective lamps. Uh, um, and, and looking at the quality control. So he finds that factory A provides 35% of the total production. So this is not really percent, this is decimal, but this is 35% of the total production, right? And of, the th of that percentage, 1.5% or 0 0.015 are defective. In the same way, Company B produces another 35% of the lamps sold, and the defective uh, lamps there are 0, 0.0. Okay, so 1% of the lamps are defective. Then we have that um, factory C produces only 30% of the lamps, but the rate of defective lamps is a little bit bigger, right? It's 2%. So with that information, we got a defective lamp and we want to find out where was it most likely to be originated, in what factory. So we're going to call these probabilities a little bit more. So the percentage of lamps that come from factory A, we're going to call that probability of A. The probability that a lamp comes from factory A is 35%. In the same way, we're going to call probability of B 35 and probability of C is 30. Now, the probability of defective lamps, this is a condition, right? This is, remember, a defective lamp is the evidence, is what I know. So I know that a lamp is defective if it comes from A 1.5% of the times, right? I know that if a, if a lamp comes from B, it's going to be defective 1% of the times. And I know that if a lamp was factory in C, it's going to be defective 20% of the, of the times. This probability here is read as probability of being defective given it comes from factory A, B, or C. Now, what we want to do, okay, but here's the question. We have a defective lamp, right? So we have a defective lamp. We know that. So the D now is on the other side of the given symbol. So given that the lamp is defective, did it come from A or did it come from B? Or did it come from C? 
Again, just like we said uh, a couple of slides ago, which one of these is higher? Once we find the maximum of these, we're going to look at what was the factory that generated that maximum. Okay, that's what's called the argmax in math. The argmax is not the number that makes that gives you the maximum, but it's actually the value a, b, or c, or whatever value that gives you that maximum. So, in mathy terms, we're looking for the probability of some value given the evidence, and that value is going to iterate. It's going to be a, b, or c, and we're going to pick the highest. So let's look at some of these things, right? So let's compute the different probabilities. We need these are the three probabilities we need to compute. We expand this PAD given, and then we expand it through uh, Bayesian rule, right? And we get these. We get these probabilities over here. Okay. Now, what is P of D given A? So what is the probability that a lamp is defective given that it comes from factory A? Okay, here, right here, first row, 0 0.015. So that would be 0 0.015 times. What's the probability that a lamp comes from factory A? 0 0.35, I believe. Yes. Then what is the and then what is the probability of D? The probability of a lamp being defective? <clears throat> I don't know yet. Okay. Now, what's the probability that a lamp comes from uh, D, right? What is the probability that a lamp comes from, uh, that a lamp is defective coming from factory B? We see that right here, 0 0.1. So 0 0.1, 0 0.01, I'm sorry. And then we multiply that by the probability of B, which I believe it's also 0 0.35 and divide by the probability of D, which we don't know yet. And then the last one, what is the probability that a lamp is defective coming from C? 0 0.02. 0 0.02. Now what's the probability that a lamp comes from C? 0 0.30, I believe, based on the table. And then we divide that by the probability of D. So here, on the, on the first number there, the first number is, uh, if I do the multiplication, that is, that is 0 0.00525 divided by the probability of D. The next number is going to be 0 0.0035 divided by the probability of D. And the last number, it's going to be 0 0.006 divided by the probability of D. Okay, now, you want to know what is the probability of D? Well, the probability of D is going to be the sum of all the likelihoods. It's going to be 0 0.005 to 5 plus 0 0.0035 plus 0 0.006 and that is 0 0.1475 okay so you can substitute the probability of d in each one of these and replace and get the get the actual probabilities and you should get numbers that are similar to these okay now, what we know is, okay, which one is the highest probability? C. So we can conclude that the defective lamp was more likely to come from factory C because the probability of, of uh, after we see a defective lamp, the probability that it comes from C is higher than the probability that it comes from A or from B.